For your first programming assignment, I'm going to have you do a menu-driven system. This was very standard 20 to 40 years ago, before there were GUI interfaces. Uh, the reason I'm having you do this is this is going to be a good review of the while structure, the loop structures that you learned, and uh, the decision structures that you learned. So this is a flow chart of a menu-driven system for an order entry menu. Uh, this is an example of what the output the user will see. So the menu has five items, a title, and after that a choice, and we'll get the input here. And the input should be one, two, three, four, five. And the logic is we continue to loop as long as it's one, two, three, four, or something else. But as soon as it's five, we're done with the program. This is very standard flowchart for a menu-driven system. So notice that we're starting it here and the flowchart ends here. The flowchart ends as soon as the choice is five. So while the choice is not five, we go into the loop and do the stuff. When the choice becomes five, we exit the loop and end the program. Now notice that I have this flowchart symbol here is called the subprocess, but that's used when you're going to call a function or a method and not do the instructions right in line with the flowchart. So there will be a function or a method called display menu. Notice that there same call to display menu is done again down here. So why is this repeatedly done? We begin the program by displaying this menu, and it will be just a bunch of right lines, and we'll get the choice. And once the choice is given by the user, a decision is going to be made. As long as the choice is not 5, we go into the loop. Immediately in the loop, we're going to make a decision using the switch structure. Is it 1? Is it 2? Is it 3? Is it 4? Or is it something else? If it's 1, 2, 3, or 4, notice again this flowchart symbol is the subprocess symbol. So a method is going to be created called new customer, and another one called new order, and update customer, and review billing. The otherwise is your error. So, so if the choice was 99, not a valid choice, we display an error message. So all the code in a subprocess or a method is executed, and then it returns back to this line of logic, the calling module. When it returns back, we come out of this decision structure, and we display the menu again. We get the choice again. Hey, let's say they entered a 3 this time. Well, 3 is not 5. And so we make the decision, and we'll show the update customer submenu or subprocess. And when they're done updating a customer, they come back, and the menu is displayed. And it repeats, and it repeats, and that menu may dis be displayed many, many times. So this subprocess is also called a method. It's called a function, also called a procedure. There's a lot of terms for this concept of subprocess, and we'll get to it in Chapter 5. Okay, but here we go. So for a subprocess, this is on page 340 of the text, what you will do is you will have a block of code, okay, and just follow this structure, private, void, and for example, this might be called update customer or review customer billing, those method names that I had given on my flowchart there. This is known as modularizing a program, and modularizing does two things. Um, simplifies your code because when you break your code apart, it allows you to focus in this method. The only thing I'm going to do is write code for review for customer billing. And you're not focused on the overall code. It really makes it simpler to write programs by breaking it up. We call it divide and conquer. And another thing you saw is code reuse. So you, we were reusing that display menu again, and it could happen 100 times by, make, by calling it every time. So that's the flowchart and the logic of creating a menu-driven program.